Let's talk about the electric vehicle space because there are going to be a lot of players getting a lot of attention and a lot of beautiful vehicles, especially when you take a look at Fisker. CES is underway and joining us uh, regarding CES and the introductions they have are uh, Heinrich Fisker, Fisker's chairman and CEO, along with our car automobile reporter, uh, Prasso Romanian. And uh, if I can just throw the first question out here, uh, Mr. Fisker, congratulations on the ocean. Um, a lot of us are wondering when we're going to be able to get our hands on Fisker's and perhaps even at a price point that those of us who don't, do not have seven figure salaries um, can enjoy. What advice do you have? Well, you know, we are starting delivering our vehicles uh, this year in November. Uh, we already got, uh, well, I, we actually announced we had 23,500 orders five days ago, but that's in the meantime got up to 24,500 orders. So we are sold out well into 2023, but we start deliveries both in Europe and U.S. Uh, in November this year. And I think it's going so well, we might deliver a few cars a little earlier than that, which is unusual. But TS is, has been great for us so far. Hey, Henrik Pross here. I see you're sitting in the Fisker Ocean SUV at CES, and you guys debuted a new, a new tech, an uh, ADAS or autonomous vehicle technology using 4D radar. Tell us more about this technology, why it's so, uh, it's so interesting. Yeah, so it's a digital radar, and we are the first company in the world to actually have this in the production vehicle when we launched here in November. And the advantage of this digital radar is that it works even better in difficult uh, weather situations. And for example, if you think about the systems that are out there today do not really work in tunnels. So if you drive through a tunnel in New York or in Europe through a mountain tunnel, uh, this system, because the digital radio actually works, it also is much better at uh, uh, dissecting the different uh, uh, objects that it's seeing. So it can really see uh, people versus you know an animal and it can see different sizes, much better. Uh, and that's really the advance of this new digital radar. So I think we're going to be able to offer a much safer autonomous system in the Fisker Intelligent Pilot that we're offering than any of our competitors. So we are super excited about it. So Henrik, uh, Tesla famously uses cameras and, and machine vision and machine learning. Why do you think that the radar systems are better than using these types of, of, of tracking and autonomous um, sensors? Well, as we all know, a camera, I mean, you can just take out your smartphone and try and take a photo, uh, you know, through heavy rain or, or, you know, when it's super dark. And that's where this digital radar really works well. It can see things that the human eye can't see. And I think that's the real advantage. And, you know, we've got a lot of new tech in, in the vehicle. You just see that turning screen behind you, the, our, you know, uh, solar roof, for example. So we're here in CS to talk about all the technology we have been able to bring into the Fisker because we essentially have a much faster development process than anybody else. So all the technology you get in a Fisker was chosen only last year, whereas normally car development takes four or five years and the technology you get in the car when you buy it is usually three years old. So I think that's one of the advantages we have. One of the things that we've been talking about with a lot of automakers has been uh, supply chain disruptions, chip shortages. Can you talk a little bit about how these potentially impacted the development and production lines over at Fisker? Yes, yeah, so we haven't had any negative impact so far. And I think one of the reasons is that we are working with two giants uh, in, in the world. One is the third largest automotive supplier, Magna, which, uh, you know, we're working a lot of, with their companies and they have already secured uh, the technologies that they need, some of the chips they need for some of the parts that we need. And then, of course, we have our other partner, which is Foxconn, which also makes chips. And, uh, you know, I am know the, the chairman of Foxconn personally, and he's assured me we're not going to miss any, any chips in our vehicles. So we haven't really seen any of these disruptions. We're still on target to deliver our first vehicles, like I said, November this year. Um, will you be able to... Let me rephrase it. Those of us who love what you're building, are we going to be able to get in for 40,000, maybe even just slightly less if we want to get an ocean? Absolutely. We are sticking to our target price, a starting price of $37,499. And that's before the tax credit uh, that you get from federal government, who was then put at $29,999. And that's a pretty cool SUV to get for that price. And that's why I think we have a unique market potential. We're already seeing our reservations spike way beyond what we expected. 
And I actually think we're going to have to eventually look at, at increasing production uh, with the rate of the reservations coming in. And you have something unique. And I put it very simple. Name me five luxury EVs you would like that cost over 80000 That's pretty easy. Name me five EVs that you love under $40,000. Hey, Henrik, you're at CES and a number of, of automakers are coming out with cars, including companies like Sony with their vision concept. What do you think about these sort of technology companies coming into the fray, coming joining your world? Can they actually compete? Are they just trying to grab some market share and or just trying to show their technology off? So, you know, we are working with Foxconn, which is the biggest manufacturer and one of the biggest technology companies in the world. And we are working with them because they also want to learn from us how we get into EVs. It's very difficult, you know, people underestimate uh, the years of development, the certification globally, all the safety standards. It's not an easy, it's probably the most difficult industry in the world. And the fact that we are this far sets us apart from everybody else. And I think uh, it, it, you will see probably some of the successful technology companies gonna have to uh, somehow partner up with, with EV makers because it takes a lot more than a few computers to make a car. In the end of the day, it's still the largest mechanical device uh, in the world and the most complicated one. And but however, we are partnering up with tech companies because we, we want the latest tech. An example is normally it takes three years to develop an automotive grade screen, high resolution screen for a car. Because we work with Foxconn, we're able to do it in 18 months and we will have the highest resolution screen that can actually turn and you can see it here. I'll just press that button here and you will see it turn. And this is something you really can watch to see while you're charging and you can make it turn and when you're driving. So that's something that we can only develop together with a high-tech company. And that's where we take advantage of the high-tech companies. Henrik, in addition to EVs, Fisker has also gotten into the NFT space with an NFT launch last month. You have another one coming up now as well with the Fisker by Hand Ocean Concept Collection. Tell us how that came about and how you see NFTs complementing what you're doing in the vehicle space. I can take zero credit from this on, other than I did the skits. It's all the young, super smart developers at Fisker that develop all our software. They say, Henrik, we got to do an NFT. And I said, I have no clue what it is but I'll make the sketch and you're going to have to make it happen. So I'm, a, I'm sorry, I can't inform you a lot about how this works, but I'm up for it because apparently according to my young software developers, this is the latest stuff. 